Hello and welcome to this video tutorial about the animation nodes. My name is Frederik Steinmetz and today we're going to create a coin stack that you can control. And by control I mean you can use simple controllers in order to make the coin stack higher and lower. So increase or decrease the number of coins. Okay, so let's start fresh. I'm going to delete the default cube and I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh, Cylinder, and I'm going to scale the cylinder. But because we're going to use a little math, I want even numbers, so I'm going to scale the dimensions down to 0 0.1, and that's roughly one coin. Okay, coin looks um, a bit uh, flat, so I'm going to you do that. Uh, set to the shading to smooth and I'm going to add a modifier edge split so we still keep the hard edges and just so we don't have to copy the edge split modifier to all our new objects I'm just going to apply it so that's it that's my coin call it coin and press Control left arrow in order to get to the compositing window okay this is going to be my coin stack and I'm in the animation nodes. I've already activated them in the add-ons menu and I'm going to press new to get a new node tree. If we want to replicate objects, it's not a very intuitive task, but it is very powerful. And once you got the hang of it, you can do a lot of things with that. You'll have a lot of power controlling multiple objects. So let's take a simple case where we control a bunch of coins. I'm going to press Shift A and add a object instancer. And you can see that there are so many nodes in this bundle that my screen actually runs out of space. Okay, not to worry. The next thing we need is a loop because a loop goes through things, obviously. You're doing something for each object in a list. That's what's called a loop. And let's call this loop just so we can identify it a lot better. Okay, every loop has an index, meaning for the first time it does something, for the second time it does something, for the third time. Each time the loop does something, the index increases. The iterations is the max value. It's often handy to have that too, but if we want to influence anything else than numbers, we need to make our own list. And the list in this case is called an iterator, so let's just add one. And since we want to add a bunch of objects, I'm going to type in object and we need an object list. Okay, now this is all we need for our loop, but we need to address it. This is kind of executing the loop, but we don't have any input. We don't know what group of objects to use. So in order to do that, we'll use a subprogram and we'll use the coin stack. The coin stack, of course, is only available in the list because there's a loop called coin stack. Okay, so now we have an object list. The instancer, if I press the little eyedropper here, I get the coin. The instancer, of course, creates a list of objects, which is replicating the object that you chose down here, as often as you tell it to here. So if I connect this, we now have an object list going into our loop, and this is where we can address the individual objects. So let's move the coin. To move an object, let's uh, you need an object transform output. The output means the animation nodes are going to return a value and pass it on to the object. And the object is going to be our current object. Now this is a list, but this is a single object, but we're cycling through it. So right now we're doing the same thing to all of the objects. So let's influence their location and also let's create a bunch of them. You can see the copy from source uses instances and this means that 
it creates a new object with the same data block as this object. But the new object doesn't have any modifiers, it doesn't have any transforms. Meaning if we want them all to be the same size, we need to apply the scale. I'm going to do that right now. Control A scale, but that doesn't work because we have multiple objects. So set this back to zero, press Control A scale, and then we can go up again. Okay, so right now we can't do anything because our object is locked. So you can see we have 15 of those now. And the other thing we can do for testing is uncheck always and check these three. If you want to know more about this, you can see the first chapter where I explain the installation and settings. Okay, so now we have 29 coins but they all do the same. So let's change that. If I want them to move in X direction by one, I can use the index as an X location. If I connect these, there's going to be a combined vector. And you can see that only the X is affected. The rest stays zero. Right now this object is at zero, zero, and this one is at one. The dimensions, it's two, so it's two blender units wide. So if we stack them in X, it, they overlap because they're twice as wide as the distance between them, of course. So what, we, what can we do about that? We can use a number math, and we need to put it before the combined vector. And if I multiply this by two, they fit neatly. Okay, let's, let's reduce that to 10 and Let's do something different with that. I want to stack them in Z. So right now they are stacked in Z, which is neat, but they are way too far apart. So in order to get them close together, I'm going to multiply this by 0.1. Okay. So now they are stacked on top of each other seamlessly. Increase that a little if you want, but right now I'm going to leave it at the seamless part. Now let's get a control object so we can influence the height of the stack or the number of coins dynamically. I'm going to use an empty single arrow. This points up so we can move it up and influence the number of coins. Okay, for that this time we need an object transform input. Okay. Again, select the object and use the location for instances. And this doesn't work. A lot of the times the nodes will know, for example, use the combined vector, but in this case we're using a vector to an integer. So that's a double conversion. A vector is three floats, meaning three decimal number. An integer is a whole number. We can't have 10.5 copies. We need exactly 10 or exactly 11. So we need to convert this ourselves. Let's use a number a vector separate and let's use the X as the index. Okay, and as you can see, the second conversion is being added for us and this is the float to integer. The float to integer just ignores whatever is behind the decimal. So 5.5 .5 becomes 5, 5.9 becomes 5, 5.1 and so on. Just the, there's no rounding, it's just ignoring anything behind the decimal. So if we move this up, nothing's happening and that is due to the free execution. So let's just put this on auto for a minute, but there's another thing we need to do. Automatically it combined, it connected the separate vector of the X and the Z. Now if I move this up, you can see the coin stack starts growing. But this is going very slow, so I'm going to use a number math again and I'm going to multiply this by 10 because we have 0 0.141 coin. So now they are even. Okay, so this is pretty neat. As I said, they, they are individual coins. This is not just extruding a cylinder. Check this. Like so. Okay, but we can do the same thing with an array. So we're not going to leave it at that. 
I'm going to move this down and with A and B I'm going to select all these and let's use a random generator. I'm going to use a number randomize and I'm going to connect the X to the random number. Okay, now you can see they all shifted to the right, except for the mother coin. I'm going to hide that one. Okay, so the entire stack shifted. So why is that? We have a random number and we can verify that it's random by altering the seed. You can see it's wiggling. And that's because every time I alter the seed, which is the node seed in this case, a new random number gets generated. But if the node seed and the input seed are the same, the random number that gets generated is also going to be the same. So what we need is the seed to be different for each coin. And the easiest way to do that is just to use the index as the seed. And now they're being displaced. Let's do the same thing for the Y value. And connect the index and connect the Y. And now we can see it gets distorted in both directions. And if you duplicate a random node, a random node seed will be generated, so they are not the same. If you want them to be the same, which I don't see a point because you could just connect those two, but if you want them to be the same, you need to select the same node seed for those two. Okay, so now it's displacing them in X and in Y randomly and in Z in a linear fashion stayed up no no randomness okay but this is this is a bit much so all we need to do is decrease the range and you can see they move closer together so a range of 0.7 i guess but i can only tell if i have the x values as well and then i see no it's not enough I don't want to fiddle with those two values all the time, so I'll get a number float and I'll connect the max. And now I can influence them both at the same time. Okay, so that's the coin stack. This is the controller, how many coins we have. And if you're not happy with the distribution, you can also check out different seed numbers. For example, this looks much better than this, I think, than this, because this is not offset enough. Let's use the perspective view so you can see it even better. And you can just cycle through them until you have a result that you like. Of course, you can use keyframes and anything to animate the empty. You could even use physics simulation and stuff like that. So this is basically an array modifier with an offset reproduced with a couple of nodes. By the way, once you're happy with the result, you don't need to use the animation nodes in order to rebuild the stack. You only need the animation nodes in order if you want to change anything to it. You can just save this Blender file out and it will be exactly as it looks like right now, except for the possibility to animate it if you send it to somebody who doesn't have the animation nodes. But that's just on a side note. Array modifier with offset. You can download the blend file on our webpage, blendediplom.com. This has been Frederik Steinmetz, and as always, please do try this at home.